All right, hey, Rio here, and welcome to CIT 93, Introduction to JavaScript and the World of Programming. I'm glad you're here. This class, JavaScript, is one of my favorite classes to teach, I'll be honest. I love programming, I love teaching, and it's such an interesting time. I've been in tech for a while, a few years now, and it never ceases to amaze me how much change has happened in my lifetime. And now we're in the middle of a major change. And I say that in the context, in the context of a computer programming language because I'm guessing you have all heard about the major chatbots, the major AI, the other term you may have heard is LLM, large language models. They're affecting everything. Well, okay, a lot of things in our world. In our world of technology, huge impacts, okay? So I've spent this summer, and I'm actually recording this a couple weeks before the start of the semester, and I've spent the summer actively looking at what has changed in relationship to teaching coding. And a lot has changed, and there's a lot of new tools that we have, and it's easy to let the computer program for you, but it's not how you learn. And so we're balancing the, newer, the newest of technology that's out there with your and our desire for you to actually have programming experience. So this course is going to reflect that change. Um, I was already going to redo this course, but this just gave me more reason to. So I'll talk more about that as we move forward. But for this first hello, welcome to CIT 93. I'm glad you're here. I just want to go over some bullet points and get you started on the course content. OK, so I'm actually in the course already. I'm in the course as a student. And what you're watching is your week one attendance. And, you know, I already started with programming, coding, why learn it? Well, actually, I didn't talk about why. And your why will probably be different for every student in here. Some of you are taking this class as a requirement for another degree. Some of you are in the web developer program. Some of you may be coming from somewhere else. So your why of learning it was going to vary, but why to learn a programming language? There's so many good reasons. One is that it helps you understand when you're having to deal with code in some way, what's going on. Uh, if you're somebody who's going to do web development, of course, this is your primary language that you're going to want to learn. Now, it's not the... It's not the only one, and I just, before I started uh, recording, I went and looked again because I was like, okay, is JavaScript, which is the language you're going to be learning in this class, still number one? And it is, but Python is right up there. Uh, Java is right up there. And now, having said that, and just, just to be clear, because this is a good time to say it, JavaScript is what we write for web pages, okay? It's 95% of all web pages use JavaScript in some way. Java is not JavaScript. And why they named it that, we could go back and look at the history. Not a good, not a good marketing tool. Because people who newly are into this will often call Java JavaScript. So I just want you to know it's not. By the way, taking Java is a great idea. I think Java is Java is right up there in the top three if it was JavaScript depending on which survey you look at, Python, and Java. So that makes it even more confusing. So this bullet point two is really about what I mentioned before, right? Chat and other AI tools for coding, because there are other ones, right? So there's built in to what, what you will learn if you don't already know your editor. We are going to use VS Code in this class. And there are systems, Copilot is one, that will actually help you code. So I guess the thing I would say to you is there's a lot of ways to get help when learning to write code. So of course there's going to be the course material that I'm going to provide, which by the way, no books required, no... It used to be if you took my class in the past, I would use a Udemy course, but I no longer do that. I record all the content myself or I lean into YouTube because there's a lot of great content on there. But there are tools out there. And the thing I would tell you is that 
using them is fine, but using them and not writing code won't really help you in the long run because what you want is this skill acquisition. Again, maybe you're ticking a box for a course uh, for a requirement otherwise. I hear that as well, but even with those particular uh, degree paths or passions or uh, goals, you still want to have the experience of coding. Now, I say that also in the context of this class because that leads into the next point. And let's just talk about it and we'll get there. So in this class, there's going to be three different kinds of work. There's going to be weekly work. Now, that weekly work actually has two components. One is a code along to where you code along with me. And then um, you will get the experience of watching me code, coding with me. And the way I grade that work uh, is actually, do you have, uh, did you code along? And there's something, and you're going to hear this later if you haven't already heard it, called commits. And commits is part of git, which is here the last thing I talk about. So that's the weekly work first kind. Second kind of weekly work uh, is actually discussions where you write code uh, and share it with your classmates and then you end up once you've written code on your own to share with everyone then we do kind of a review of other people's code because one important uh, skill you can walk away with in a class like this is actually knowing how to read code because there's, as in writing the English language, there's the ability to read and the ability to write. And oftentimes, the more you read, the better writer you are. True in coding as well. All right, so dev work is number two, okay? So this is where, and this will start, uh, I believe, right at, right before the mid, uh, mid part of the class, you'll start uh, writing, a coding a program uh, and we'll talk about that as we get there. And then you will have assignments every week related to that. So in a sense, what you'll see is on the weekly work, after we start doing dev work, we see a little decrease in the number of items because we're also doing dev work. And then the last thing is a code review. So you have one code review quiet required for this class. And what that means is that there was one time in the semester that you come in uh, to see me in a Zoom session or in person. And depending on when you have signed up for your code review, I, we will have a conversation about anything related to what we've covered in this course. So it's a comprehensive interview slash code review, okay? Code reviews are very common in programming, okay? If you keep, if you're gonna go ahead and do development, you're gonna run into code reviews. But code reviews are really the way I authentically determine if you're learning how to code. Now, so A, that's important. So the other thing about the code review is it actually has a window, and I think it's starting in week, 13. Actually, I have this in, in the syllabus as well. Uh, actually, I'll probably, probably talk about this more as we get into the course. But what will happen is we'll open up the window, right? You'll have a window from week 13 to week 18 to do the code review. And I hope you hear this. The sooner you do the code review, right? So if you did the code review Actually, I think it opens up in 11. I think like the example I gave in the syllabus is if you did the code review in week 13, then the code review would cover one through 13. If you did it in week 14, it'd cover week one through week 14. So I'm encouraging you to do your code reviews early uh, as a way to help you keep track on this course. Because one of the questions I have really asked myself is about late work. And I feel like when we offer late work, students often will use that as a way to kind of manage their time and think I can work on this class because there's not a big ding, meaning a big reduction in late work. So here's what I would say. I do accept late work, okay? I do want to work with students as much as I can. If, right, so, so here's what I would say. In general, I do reduce... Uh, late work by 25%. But I also know that sometimes stuff just comes up out of your control, right? So the better you're communicating with me, the more I can work with you. Um, I, you can do late work right up to the point of the end of the class, but it is discounted 25%. Again, I'll do my best to work with students. 
But the reason I've put the code review as one starting in week 13 is that going to week, I think it's week 11, going to week 17, 18, is that that should encourage you to stay on track because, and here's the thing, you, you, for, a, for you to come into a code review in week, let's say 11, the first window open for code review, you would have to be caught up with the course content at that point, okay? I know it can sound a little confusing. It took me a little while to come up with this design. First time I'm running it this semester, so we'll see how it goes. More on that later. All right, so the course is set up to be sequential progress. And what that means, and you can kind of see it if I back up here, right? If I was to go, I actually have full screen on, so let me do view and take it off of full screen. If I went back here and I looked, you'll notice that week one attendance is... These two are grayed out, and what that really means is that you have to complete each item in sequence to move on to the other item. So in this case, the last thing we'll talk about in a minute here is the thing you have to submit to move on. Okay, I do run a Discord server uh, for this class and my other classes. I've given a link here to it. It's not required. It's just suggested, especially because there are going to be times that you work that I don't or that I work and you don't, right? Uh, I'm, I'm typically an early morning. I'm generally, uh, I generally kick off the computer. I try around six. So my schedule is pretty set because I'm an early morning person and you may not be and your fellow classmates may be like you and have that ability and it's just good to have uh, live chat. So if you don't know what Discord is, check it out. It's a great uh, system for interactivity. Um, there is a code of conduct I have for that class, so you do want to check that out to make sure you understand what that code of conduct is. So please feel free to join the Discord server. One thing I will say is once you jump on the Discord server uh, here, we, I have a class, uh, what's called a private channel. So when you come in, you'll come into the general. And then that is also the code of conduct up there. But here, uh, or actually you can do it here, probably better here in this, because under what you will see under current FCC students, you will only see this start here, because these channels are private, and I only add students that are in that class uh, for that. So just know that that's a way that's set up and you'll have to just ask just ask me hey add me to that channel and I'll be happy to do it all right tutoring there is tutoring available Zach Smith is awesome uh, he took my class last semester and I'm really excited to have him on board with us so yes there are AI tools but there are humans that can help you as well and Zach is a great one to do that I'll have his uh, schedule soon so the last thing you need to know is that this class requires git and github and the first step is GitHub. So if you don't know already, GitHub is a free website that, and you can sign up for a free account. I'm already logged on, so let me log out. So you will, uh, yep, I am logged out. Not sure why you didn't take me. So what you want to do is sign up. <laughs> okay, that was a question. I didn't realize it. Yes, sign out. All right, so what you want to do here is sign up for a free account, okay? Um, even though... Uh, again, new to GitHub, create an account. By the way, if you're already using GitHub, you can totally use that one as well. What you will end up doing is walking through the process, making sure, because GitHub can actually do a little marketing to try to say, hey, pay for an account. Don't pay for an account. It's completely free, so don't do that. So what you want to do here is once you get through the process of creating your account, right? What you're going to do as showing this assignment is actually give me your GitHub username, okay? And why I need that is I run a course, I run a type of, a, a part of GitHub called an organization. In that organization, we have private repos and public repos. And by the way, you have that on your own because like when you create a GitHub account, you have your own GitHub and then uh, that has private and public, but then inside our course organization, we'll have that as well. So what I will do is when I see you submit this, I will invite you in to the GitHub organization. 
and then you'll um and matter of fact you can't really you can't do the next assignment <laughs> until i invite you so really important right and that's where we kind of get back to the your time and my time might be different so the sooner you do this first step the better uh, positioned you are to get the work done okay so all you have to do here is submit start the assignment and whatever you set up for that github username is what you will give me here and then you'll be ready to now mine happens to be real waller it doesn't really matter hit next oh sorry hit submit <laughs> that would be good right Ooh, get a nice little thing. and now i'm done now look what this looks like i want you to see this so now i've completed the first assignment this means all the items have to com be complete you can't move on to week two until you finish week one so now comes setting up that dev environment okay and this is there's three videos here to walk you through how to set up um, your local environment because having a dev environment and actually I ended up asking chat GDP about this is it helpful to teach students Git and GitHub who are new to programming and there's some yeses and nos about that um, I have found because it's vital you can't work on this class without it so I have to do it and this is why I've I've hopefully set it up to make it a little more uh, manageable to set this up I've had I've had many students do this in the past 95% get through it no problem there are a couple of folks that uh, run into problems for various reasons generally the uniqueness of your setup runs fine on Windows runs fine on a Mac runs fine on Linux I actually have run it on a Chromebook, although you have to have a Chromebook that has a certain amount of specs to do it that will allow you to, to do what's called containers, if you want to know about that. And, you know, the other thing is here, if you're somebody that needs to do cloud setup, I haven't gone over that. There are systems out there. I've used them. Uh, if you want to know about that, come talk to me. Um, definitely check out the syllabus, right? Because I, I, I kind of outlined some of those uh, topics I covered here in more detail. All right. Glad you're here. Talk to you soon.